Grace of Peace. I'm Brian Mosso, the Baptist Campus Minister at Drexel University, and this is Peace and Power Bible Study, the peace of Jesus Christ to change your life, the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world. And we are looking at Amos chapter 8, and this is the third video this week. We are looking at the idea of silence. And interestingly enough, we went in that very first section of this chapter, we went from songs to lament and wailing to silence. And here we see that this silence is a thick silence where it's silence from the word of the Lord. Let's look at this passage that wraps up the last part of chapter 8. Amos 8, 11 through 12. Hear this, the days are coming. This is the declaration of the Lord God. I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and roam from north to east, seeking the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. In the day, the beautiful young women and the young men also will faint from thirst. Those who swear by the guilt of Samaria and say, as your God lives, Dan, or as the way of Beersheba lives, they will fall never to rise again. So there's this idea that famine has been in the land. Famine has been threatened uh, before in Amos. Famine was one of these you know, curses for disobedience to God. But it wasn't famine from food or drought or rain. It was famine from the word of the Lord that is being prophesied by Amos at this time. And this idea that, you know, we saw in the previous chapter, Amaziah told the prophet to quit prophesying. We saw that in chapter two as well. And now the word of the Lord is scarce and there is silence there that is a significant significant curse um billy smith says this in his commentary worse than strong words of judgment from the lord is no word from the lord an ominous and foreboding silence to receive no word from god in response to cries for help meant that god had hidden his face from them rejected and abandoned them to their enemies god is silent and let's just think about this from a jewish judaism old testament perspective the word of the Lord created the universe. We see that in Genesis 1. The word of the Lord called the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The word of the Lord delivered from Egypt. The word of the Lord, the Torah, was given to Moses as a way to live in covenant relationship with God. The word of the Lord, thus says the Lord, is central to the prophetic word. Silence from God would be seen as a dissolution of the covenant and the absence of his presence. So there's this idea that when God speaks God and God has spoken, things have happened for good and not for bad, that the Lord speaks and Israel lives, Israel's created, the universe is created, the Lord speaks and gives instruction. The word of the Lord is life in the Israelite mindset. This idea that God communicates with his people, that God shares words with the faithful, is dripping from the idea of what it means to to be in a covenant relationship with God. And silence, that would mean that the relationship has been damaged and maybe damaged beyond repair. Silence is a considerable threat. And going back to those verses that we saw in the, uh, we can see that 
the second half, the healthy ones are growing faint from thirst. Swear by the guilt of Samaria, the God and Dan, all the way to Beersheba. Nothing is do nothing they're doing, either in Dan or Bethel, worshiping this golden calf or these pilgrimages to Beersheba is able to bring back the word of the Lord, the 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 the, the relationship with God. It is in some ways broken. God is silent. And I just want you to feel how heavy that weighs at the end of chapter 8. Now, as Christians, we have developed this idea um, that the word of the Lord is, is primary. Christ, Jesus, is called the word of the Lord. Preaching and speaking and teaching the words of Jesus is throughout the revelation of the Lord is the, the how this universe culminates is heavy with God speaking things and culminating what's coming forth. Scripture, the Word, the Torah, and the Bible, and the New Testament folk, um, is featured centrally in a lot of our churches, especially our Protestant churches, this idea of the spoken word of God. This idea that silence from God would be a heavy thing, a, a, a curse would weigh heavy on the Christian church as well. We can identify with this. Now, we have the written word of God, and that should be there and prominent in our lives. But, but what would it mean for God to be silent? How important is the word of the Lord in your life? How often do you open the scriptures? How often do you hear the word preached? How often do you study the word of God? How often do you engage with Christ? And question here, this is rhetorical. What is one way you can engage the word of the Lord this week? Maybe a special way or maybe a continuation of something you always do. We need to take advantage that. And this time, at this place, God is not silent. In our lives, God is not silent. Let's take advantage of that. Israel did not, and then God went silent, and it was, it was a desperate time. So, just some homework. Spend time in the Word of the Lord this week. Reread Amos and notice how often the text mentions the words of the Lord. Like, this is the Lord's declaration, or thus says the Lord, or the Lord speaks, the Lord said. How much of Amos is focused around the Word of the Lord? And then, as we saw in an earlier section here, God cares about how we do business. Pay attention to your work. Pay attention to just issues of justice and righteousness at your workplace. See if God would care about how you are going about your work or how the company you work for goes about their work. Just pay attention to that. I, I would love to hear any comments you have about that. Um, drop down in the comments below and listen to God because he is speaking. He is not silent at this moment. As always, there are two ways to join live Monday nights at 7 p.m. via Zoom, these weekly wrap-ups on YouTube and WordPress. I'm all over Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WordPress, and YouTube. Those links are in the descriptions below as well. Enjoyed having this conversation with you. Hope it continues soon.